Now that we've created three price modifiers, we need to figure out a way of how we're going to get them into our lowest price filter. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a factory class uh, which will do the work for us. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. So here we are in the lowest price filter and what we want to achieve is we want to get this price modifier. And so the thing, uh, what I'm thinking of doing is something along these lines. Price modifier equals, and we can create a factory which we can inject. So this price modifier factory, and then on that factory, we'll just have one simple method called create. And so, what information does it need in order to create a price modifier? Let's go back to the lowest price filter test. And here where we've got our promotions data provider, basically what it needs in order to create it, it just needs to know what type of modifier. And so it will be the type property on the promotion. Before we can do that, we need to set up our loop. So we want it to loop over the promotions. Just gonna change the name of the parameter to promotions, we'll make that plural. And then here, I'm gonna say, for each promotions as promotion, opening curly, and then we'll close it just after where we set those um, values on the inquiry. Okay, so. Here we can now say create using promotion get type. And then what we need to do is we need to somehow get this price modifier factory. So let's go to the top here and I'll create a constructor. And so we've sort of established a contract, haven't we? We've said that it's gonna have one method and that will be create. So let's actually inject a price modifier factory interface obviously we don't have that yet but we can work ahead so private price modifier factory interface and so that can live in filter modifier we'll create a folder in there called factory and then inside of the factory folder, we'll create a new, uh, this will be an interface, price modifier factory interface. And like we say, this is just going to have a create method, and that will be a string, and that will be the name of the modifier type. And this is going to return a price modifier interface. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. We've created a price modifier factory interface. It has uh, one method which must be implemented by an implementing class. So let's go and create one of those now. So here we'll create a concrete price modifier factory. Of course, this will implement the price modifier factory interface. And so that means that we also must do, must implement that create method. And let's think about how this is going to work. So first of all, we need to take this uh, string, which comes in snake case. If we go back to Law's price filter test, uh, we have these snake case modifier names, and we need to convert those to class names, which are in Pascal case. And so we'll say modifier class base name equals. So doing this one step at a time, first thing we need to do is we need to uppercase the words. So you see words, the string will be the modifier type and then the separator. And so our words are separated with underscores. And then what we need to do is pass that into a replacer, which will replace these underscores with empty spaces or it will just remove those underscores and so we can do that with string replace str replace 
And so the first argument is what we are replacing, which is underscores, then what we replacing it with, which is nothing, we're basically getting rid of it, and then the third argument is the actual string. So I need to remember our parentheses on the end there, so hopefully that should be working okay. And we'll just correct this typo here, so modify our class base name. And what we'll need to do is append that to the namespace for the modifiers. So I think what I'm going to do is go back to the price modifier factory interface and I'll actually just create a constant there. So price modifier namespace equals and the modifiers are in app filters modifiers. So two backslashes on the end there. And then let's go back to our price modifier factory and we'll just append those two things together in order to get us the modifier name. So price modifier namespace appended with modifier class base name. That should give us our modifier. And then what we really need to do is check that that class exists because you could have scenarios where maybe this has been set up in the database, they've added a new type, but no modifiers have actually been created in PHP yet. That's quite a common uh, thing to happen. So we need to just make that check that there is an actual modifier class in place to do the work. And if not, we need to throw an exception which can be handled somewhere. And so if not class exists, modifier, then what can we throw? What I'm thinking of doing is just as a temporary measure, uh, grabbing something which is built into Symfony. Um, all the main error handling, I'm gonna leave it till the end of the series because for the main reason that error handling, for whatever reason, isn't very popular on YouTube. People just wanna do all the sexy stuff. So uh, if we leave that stuff to the end, then the hardcore people that want to do error handling can uh, watch it and those that don't, I'm not gonna inter interrupt their enjoyment. And so here there is something called class not found exception which comes from symphony component var exporter exception so we'll throw that in for now and the way this works is I can just pass it the class name and it will actually come up with an error that says class name uh, class class name not found and so that's if the class cannot be found does not exist but if there is a modifier class then all we need to do is just return that like so. In fact, we need to put the new word in front of that. So return a new modifier. Just a quick one on comments, uh, which I've left in here like this. I've really just left them in to guide people that are watching the videos. In reality, I won't leave that noise in there because it's quite obvious what this is doing. It's building a modifier class base name. But uh, on this rare occasion, I'm gonna leave the comments in there just so that people can follow. And it just makes the videos a little easier to follow if you've got the comments in there. Let's now go back to our lowest price filter and see where we're at. So we can get our price modifier factory interface like so. And then what I'm thinking of doing is just dumping this out and making sure that we do now get a price modifier that our factory is working okay. So DD price modifier. And then all I need to do is just go back to the test and run this. So we're looking for lowest price filter test. And so at least we know that our class not found exception is working okay, but I must have made some mistake here. So it's saying class app filters modifiers date range multiplier not found. Okay, so basically the reason for that is because they are in singular and not plural. So let's go back to our price modifier factory and it is a price modifier factory interface. So here where I did this, it should be app filter modifier. And then I think if we go and run our test again, that should have fixed it. Okay, great. So as you can see here, we're now getting app, filter, modifier, date, range, multiplier. And that is because this is the order that they are being uh, supplied in. So let's actually go and change this and we'll remove promotion one just to make sure that we then see one for fixed price voucher. Let's run this again. Okay, great, app, filter, modifier, fixed price voucher. Let's remove promotion two. And so this time we should see one for even items multiplier. Okay, even items multiplier, great. So let's just make sure that 
this isn't working by accident so we'll change that to odd items multiplier and again we should see our class not found exception okay symphony component var exporter exception class not found exception class app filter modifier odd items multiplier not found so this is all working nicely let's return this to how it was so promotion one promotion two promotion three and then we'll go back to our lowest price filter we can remove this and then in the next one we should be able to actually finish off this apply method and we'll strip out some of these comments and so it should loop over the promotions find a price modifier for each one and then actually create a modified price and then what we'll need to do is do this check here to see if the modified price is less than the current lowest price and if so then we'll save it to the inquiry and also update at the lowest price in order for it to be available for the next iteration and so on so i'll work on that in the next one if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like youtube to show you more of my content all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and also if you're interested in my full length courses then make sure you check out my site at garyclark.tech i'll leave a link on the screen and in the description